On this edition of Food for Life, from the Lift Jesus High Rally, Cardinal Thomas Collins on the Light of Christ. And then we will be able to address whatever the challenges we face in this world. The darkness that surrounds the light of Christ. We'll be able to spread that light more and more in this society so very much in need of it. We rejoice in the majesty and in the mercy of God. In the midst of our struggles in this world in which we face the two dangers which face the early church as well, and I think of this especially as I have spent many years of my life studying the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. I spent two years of the last 16 verses. I'm so slow a reader that it took me some time. But in that book we hear of persecution and seduction. Those are the great dangers that face people then. The persecution of faithful, believing Christians and the seduction of Christians who would not perhaps be called to shed their blood for Christ, but who would be tempted to be drawn in to the dead spirit of a society that has ice at its heart, a society that worships false gods, and but very attractive ones, very seducing ones, ones that allure. And that, those dangers we face today, we think of so many martyrs who shed their blood for Christ. And we look at that and we say, may we live our lives faithfully. When we're called to look deeply at what really matters, away with those things which are cheap in our lives, let us have a faith so deep that we can truly imitate the faith, if not the sacrifice directly of those great martyrs of ancient times and of our own day, of today, in fact, this day. People are shedding their blood for Christ. So this is a season when we're called to go deep, to reflect upon the persecution, to reflect upon the seduction, which is more of the problem we face, society where people are bought and sold in so many different ways. And yet, in the midst of all that, in the midst of that darkness, we see the light of Christ advancing down the aisle. And as we reach out towards it, we catch that fire, we share it with others, and soon the whole church is bright with the light of Christ, bright with the vision of the majesty of Christ the King, bright with the vision, the awareness of the mercy of God. This is why we rejoice in the midst of this penitential path we tread in this world, rejoice not with an optimism that says everything's going well. Look around. (laughs) No. (laughs) Things are... There was once a, a foolish man who said we should get up every day and say, every day in every way, things are getting better and better. Uh, Well, let me, let's wake up a bit. No, we rejoice. In the midst of a world of persecution, in the midst of a world of seduction, by a society which is not of Christ, a society in which people are treated like things, where education, the family, is treated as health, you know, gymnastics or something. Good grief. This is a world where we need to go deep. We need to be deep, 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 so that we can have that spiritual depth that allows us to deal with the persecution and pray for our brothers and sisters who are facing that perhaps farther away, although many of us come from those places or have relatives who are facing that right now, and more immediately that we need to deal with the seduction of a world which has turned from the Lord. And yet we do rejoice. We rejoice in the presence of the Lord to guide us, to strengthen us every step of the way, The light of Christ may come in to a darkened church, but it is the light of Christ, and the light is not conquered by that darkness. We rejoice in the majesty of the Lord, which we see in the book of Revelation and throughout the scriptures. Jesus is Lord. That is why, although it's very good to lift Jesus higher, Jesus is higher, is is the Lord of the universe. I was just, just a short time ago looking at the last photographs of the great... Blessed Miguel Pro, the saintly priest of Mexico in 1927. And you see him kneeling there before his execution, and 
Long live Christ the King, his hands out just before he died. The victim triumphant in faith. And so the majesty of Christ the King strengthens us in the midst of these struggles, be it persecution, as many of our brothers and sisters face, or seduction, which is our problem, by a society that does not value the human person, that sees people as expendable, that says our value comes in how we function, not in who we are, but what we can do. And if we can't do things anymore, we kind of are not, life is not worth living. What a shallow, cold, dark way of looking at things, and yet it is a way which is approved by the vast majority of Canadians. As I discover on radio broadcasts, what people say, but 77% of Canadians are in favor of euthanasia. So we need to go deep. And we are encouraged by God's majesty. And as we look at the gospel today, we find rejoicing in his mercy. We see the prodigal son. In the midst of all of his sins, of all of that, we see him coming back. And the grace of God touches his heart. And he says, I will return to my father. And I'll say, Father, I have sinned. I am not worthy of you. And as he heads up the road, you can imagine knees trembling and quaking at, oh, what will dad say when I come home? He sees his father running down the road, embracing him with that mercy and love. And even the older brother who was very righteous, but didn't have a lot of love in his heart. You know, and he says, how can you do this to this son of yours who, you know, wasted everything? And the father says, but this brother of yours, he was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And that's why we rejoice in the midst of all of our cares and troubles. And that's why we have not a temporary optimism based upon illusion that everything's going well. Illusion is our enemy. But we rejoice on this rejoicing Sunday and every day of the year because we see clearly that Jesus is Lord. Our Heavenly Father surrounds us with mercy. And we need to go deep into that. And then we will be able to address whatever the challenges we face in this world. The darkness that surrounds the light of Christ. And we'll be able to spread that light more and more in this society, so very much in need of it. May the Lord guide us and protect us in our country, in this and in so many other ways. And may we be as strong and deep, rejoicing in the majesty and the mercy of God, and inspired by that with deep hope, not just optimism, deep hope. May we be quiet, faithful, effective, loving witnesses to the gospel to the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Cardinal Thomas Collins on The Light of Christ, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario. M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1664. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at peace. The number of things in my life I know if I go down that path, I will lose my peace. If I don't do this, I will lose my peace. And oftentimes, that's the bottom line. Listen, why am I going to make this difficult decision? Because if I don't, I will not have peace. And I want peace. I want to talk about uh, fatherhood a little bit. They say all fatherhood comes from God. And every father 
in a way represents God the Father. And they say that the best, most perfect representation of God the Father among humans was Saint Joseph. Because Saint Joseph was specifically called, prepared, anointed to be the earthly father of Jesus, the foster father of Jesus, the one who in some mysterious way would um, represent God the Father to Jesus as he was growing in wisdom and stature, as, as Scripture says. And so, again, St. Joseph would have represented the Father in a, in, in a particularly, almost perfect way, but uh, definitely uh, a, a prepared, anointed instrument of God to represent God the Father. Joseph was the one Jesus would call Abba. Isn't that beautiful? But anyways, one of the ways I think Joseph imaged God the Father is that Joseph was a man of few words. In all the scripture, not one word of Joseph's is recorded. He is the silent man. And when we look at God the Father, we know that God spoke through the prophets and sent angels and all that. He gives us his word. But in, in terms of words that God the Father spoke audibly in, in human language, openly and publicly, not just for, to, for one person to hear, but that he spoke audibly for the public to hear. To my knowledge, there's only two places in Scripture, two times in, the, in, in all of the story, story of uh, salvation where God the Father spoke audibly, publicly, for all to hear. And that is at the baptism of Jesus and at the transfiguration. And so that's why I say Joseph is like God the Father. He's a man of few words, and, and God the Father is a father of few words. Now when a person who is holy, who is great, who is wise, only says a few things, you want to pay very close attention to those few words. Those few words spoken audibly, openly, clearly by God the Father are meant to be paid very close attention to by all of humanity. So let's hear these words spoken by God the Father. And again, all of Scripture is God's word to us, but brought to us, again, through the prophets, through the wisdom writers, and all that. These are, these, this is, these are exceptional words. In Mark chapter 1, verse 11. That's an easy one to remember, by the way. Mark 1, 1, 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 11. This is, again, at the baptism of Jesus. It says, And a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Words from heaven. Words from God the Father. Spoken because He wanted us to hear these words. Very important words from heaven. And then the second instance is, again, on the Mount of Transfiguration. In Luke chapter 9, beginning in verse 35. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen Son. Listen to Him. So there you have it. Those are the two instances where the voice of God the Father was heard audib audibly, for all to hear. And again, we need to believe and understand and pick up on the fact that these are not only important, they are extremely important. We're given basically in the first instance at the baptism of Jesus a piece of information. I guess it's the most important piece of information in the whole universe. The most important piece of information any person needs to know is that Jesus is the chosen Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God, the, the, the one Son of the Father. That's the most important piece of information God the Father wants us to know. Nothing more important than that. And then the second word from the Father, voice from the Father, is not a piece of information, it's an instruction. We only have one instruction uh, spoken audibly openly for us to hear. 
This is my chosen son. Listen to him. <laughs> there is nothing more important in life than listening to Jesus. From God the Father's perspective. Now, that's, that's his perspective. You think he's right? Well, of course he's right. He's God the Father. Why is it so important? Why is there nothing more important in this life for us to do than to listen to Jesus? Well, Jesus reveals that to us. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except me. The Father is telling us, listen to Jesus because Jesus brings us to the Father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one goes to the Father except through Jesus. And that's why listening to Jesus is the most important instruction from heaven. Do you believe that? Have you accepted that? In John chapter 3, verse 16, you're all familiar with it. For God so loved the world that his, He gave His only begotten Son, so that whoever might believe, well, believes in Him might not perish, but might have eternal life. That's how critical it is for us to listen to Jesus, to accept Jesus, to believe in Jesus. Whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but will have eternal life. Eternal life is kind of more important than all the other things in this world, amen? And that's again why God the Father, this one instruction, one, one instruction, listen to my Son. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but by Him. Whoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Do you see again the, the significance of this one instruction from God the Father? It's like at the end of our life when we get before the judgment seat of God, He's going to ask us, well, did you listen to the one thing I asked you to do? The one instruction, the one instruction that was spoken from heaven audibly, openly, for you to hear, did you listen to that one instruction? Did you listen to my son Jesus? We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. And then finally, I want to share one more scripture. This is very interesting. Do you remember the story of Martha and Mary? Martha's serving and she's worried and anxious. A lot of ladies don't like that story because they think, you know, Mary's sitting around doing nothing, leaving all the work to Martha. That's not fair. But it's very interesting what Jesus tells Martha. Check this out. And this is uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 40, 41. Jesus says to, to, to Martha, 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 you are anxious and worried about many things. But listen to this, verse 42, the next verse. Jesus says to, to Martha, there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. Isn't that interesting? Jesus says to Martha, there is need of of only one thing. What is Mary doing? She's listening to Jesus. The one thing that the Father wants us to do in this life, the most important thing, the most critical thing, listen to Jesus because He is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to get to the Father, it's through Jesus. It's so important for us to be clear on this, on the identity of Jesus as Son of God and on the mission of Jesus as the one who brings us to the Father. It's interesting in, in our world today, there's a lot of people who say, oh, Jesus, you know, he was just a legendary figure. He was just a nice guy and all that type of thing. Jesus, he's not a fairy tale or a legend. Any, histori any um, honest historian will acknowledge that the 
historical evidence for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is rock solid. Of the person who says, oh, it's all legends, doesn't know what they're talking about. The historical foundation for our faith is rock solid. I'm not going to get all into that. People think, oh, Jesus, he was just, you know, another nice guy. Jesus is in a category of his own. And it's not just us saying this as Christians. Objectively speaking, study the life of Jesus Christ compared to any other person. There is no comparison. No comparison. An open-minded, intellectually honest, thinking person has every reason to believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only Savior of the world and to give his or her life completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is who he said he was. And so again, the voice of the Father. This is my beloved Son. This is my chosen Son. And listen to him. Again, if we get one thing right in this life, let it be this. Brothers and sisters, I want to share with you something that the Lord has put on my heart as a priest. And that, and you know, we do a lot of things as priests. The Lord kind of gives us particular missions. But just recently, I felt the Lord calling me to invite people, to challenge people, to make a lifelong commitment of reading Scripture every day for the rest of their life. And we priests, we don't do this stuff, type of thing lightly, you know, just to say, hey, you need to do this for the rest of your life. But the Lord has put it on my heart that me as a priest in my ministry, I need to explicitly invite people, challenge people to make a decision and a resolve to listen to Jesus' voice. He speaks to us through Scripture to read His Word every day of our life. And I'm not going to do that here because I, I, I want... This is the type of thing we need to, 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 to think about it and make a decision. Now, notice I'm saying I want you to resolve. I'm not asking you to take a vow. The Scripture says don't take vows too, too, too quickly. You know, your vows are a whole other category. And the reason for that is as a priest, I don't want to put people under the law. The Lord has given us specific laws. We need to follow them. As a priest, I need to be faithful to my priestly vows and all of that. As married people, you need to be faithful. Those are vows you've made. Those are very seriously... Uh, but again, let's not, add, uh, let's not add more laws, but certainly a resolution, a decision. That's what I want to do. I want to challenge our Catholic people to read the Word of God, to listen to the voice of God, to learn about Jesus every day of their life for the rest of their life. You think that's a good idea? You've heard the saying, you are what you eat. And it's quite, there's a lot of truth to it. The statistics show that if we make healthy food choices and healthy lifestyle choices like no smoking and exercising and eating properly, we're very likely to live healthier lives. I know that when I was younger, I hardly eat a vegetable. And, and then as I got older, I tried to make better choices and I never ate vegetables or salads much. But as I ate them more and more, I, I actually wanted to eat them. It was something I wanted to do. And those choices that I put into practice became natural choices for me. Well, the same is true with our spiritual life. We have to make right choices for our spiritual health. We are called to holiness as Christians. We're not called to just, you know, be mediocre, but God's called us to holiness. I think of the scripture found in 1 Peter 1.15. It says, like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So it's a given that if we are to become holy, we have to do the basics. We need to be praying daily. We need to be reading our scriptures. We need to be attending mass. We need, need to be involved in our parishes. But there's also other areas of our lives that we need to take a look at. It's not just those basic areas that we know that we have to follow. But we need to watch, for instance, what we watch on television, we need to be careful and make right choices. I remember when I was younger, and this is probably going back 30 years, I'd gather with a group and we'd watch this program weekly, and it was sort of like a soap opera type nighttime program. And I just think of the unhealthy innuendo and the promiscuity and the values that were promoted in that program that are so contrary to the standards that we're called to in the Bible as Christians that we're to adhere to. So we need to make right choices about even the programming we watch. 
or the movies we watch in theaters. And I know that there's not, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff out there, but there's still some good stuff and you can make the right choices about your television programs and about the movies you watch. Likewise, even what we read. We have to be careful if we're avid readers. We need to choose novels, again, that, that don't promote values that are contrary to what we believe as Christians. We need to make right choices again. Even the music we listen to, and this is a big one in our home with three teenagers, almost four teenagers shortly, that I have in my house. I'm regularly having discussions saying, look, listen to the lyrics and make right choices. If the music isn't good, don't listen to it. There's other choices. I encourage my children to be well-rounded and choose a variety, of, a variety of music, not just the pop music that you hear on your regular radio station, but enjoy Christian music and classical music and Zydeco and all sorts of kinds of music that are fun and good to listen to. Just be careful about what you choose to listen to. Another area that we have to be careful in is our friends. We can't choose our family, but we can choose our friends. Now, I know that we have to be around some people that don't share our faith like we do, and we want to be a light to them. But if there are relationships in our lives that are negative and pulling us away from God, we need to prayerfully consider those and reevaluate whether that's something that's good for us. If it's taking us away from God, it's not. And we need to, to look at that very carefully and address those issues. I think of the psalmist. David, who wrote in Psalm 101, verse 3, and I want to read that to you. He said this, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. We need to make choices about what we let ourselves see and hear and what we participate in. And this can lead us away from God or lead us on the path of holiness if we're good, making good spiritual choices. I think of the scripture 1 Timothy 7, 8. It says this, Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline is only a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Just like we make good, cho uh, good choices in the natural, to eat the right things and to exercise and to do the right things to stay healthy, in the spiritual realm we need to make right choices to stay on that path that leads to God. God bless you. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1664 and today's topic, Cardinal Thomas Collins on The Light of Christ. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at peace. There's a number of things in my life I know if I go down that path, I will lose my peace. If I don't do this, I will lose my peace. And oftentimes that's the bottom line. Listen, why am I going to make this difficult decision? Because if I don't, I will not have peace. And I want peace. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.